what's going on YouTube, it's your boy Marcus the Boss with some more PU replays and I know you're looking at the title like, but isn't Marco 5 the Ball 5 actually the Fresh Prince of NU? What is this blasphemy? Uh, you will soon find out that uh, the Fresh Prince, well I'm not actually going anywhere, and I might come out with some NU replays and content in the near future for the time being. I haven't made any team since the Vanilla Expand, which I should make a video about, but, but I don't know. I haven't made any teams since, since the Vanilla Expand, but I have made PU teams because I've been kind of in and out there at the moment. I came with the initial intention to build Semi Sage teams and then to build Choice Man Lore Guys teams, which this team is. He got Specs Electrode because it's fast as fuck and it just outruns everything. It just. It, it's. Yeah, it just basically just. It outruns everything. It's pretty fast, you know. Stuff like that. Not really much to it. Thunderbolt, Signal Beam, Hidden Power Grass, and Volt Switch. And I want to pair that with Spike Stack and Choice Bandit Gorgeist, which you see right here. It's Super Gorgeist, Seed Bomb, Shadow Sneak Trick, and Explosion. Pretty solid set. Shout out to Keo from the, that fucking December 2015 video. That video is Heat. Um, then I have the Spiker Amistar. It's not Elite, it's just like a, a defensive Amistar that has Stealth Rock and Spikes because it actually has the moveslot for both on a defensive set, which I usually aren't the biggest fan of, but here it works. Sand Slash to spin, because I didn't want default because I have spikes, then I have Scyther because Scarf Scyther, and then I have Curse Quagsire to help set up and sweep. Not sweep necessarily, just something that can actually like boost up because nothing else on the team can do so because my other offensive mons are old choice. And all my defensive mons are blue. So. This is actually uh, a Ruben tour. I was in another uh, tour battle before this, but I unfortunately didn't have the foresight to save that replay too. But we do have this game, then the semifinals, and the actual finals in this video today. This is the quarterfinals, I guess, because yeah, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. Second, third, and then the final round, of course. So shout out to my round one opponent. Unfortunately, like I said, I didn't have the foresight to save the replays, but I do have this one. Or I didn't have the foresight to download the replay. So I'm leading with Scyther against Primeape, but I'm in a U-turn because this Flying Resist is Electros, which is a massive threat to my team, if you can't tell. So I have one way really taking this out. It's with Gorgai's Choice Bandit Seed Bomb, and it doesn't kill. And he knocks off my band, but it's okay because the biggest threat to my team is out of the picture. He goes into Primeape, he's not killing me with anything, and he's getting a U-turn. So I'm tricking the switch in, which is Roselia, which is perfect because now Roselia is no longer a Violite. And that's how much bandage House Snake would have done, but I'm clearly not banded. Either way, nice three at KO. He gets two spikes. I have the spinner. He has nothing to block it. So there's two mons out the picture already. Lilligan, Quiver Dance? Nah, fam. Nah. We still killing. He's out of the picture. So broken Lilligan's gone. Lilligan's absolutely broken. Ban that shit. Nothing resist area lights anymore so I'm clicking that. Puku move is a problem. I go hard electro I probably shouldn't have but I mean I did it anyway. Got that boy poisoned. I probably could have volt switched but I didn't think that he just let me volt switch so that's why I doubled the sand slash. But he just recovered so he had he was hell bent on letting me just volt switch. He does gonna block me which I didn't want but if he's not rest then he's gonna die to the poison so I'm fine with it. He soaks me so he's block soak recover pending the fourth move if it's rest we're we in for a problem if not then uh we're gucci but he is toxic so we're, we're good because he can do this all he wants i have five pokemon he's gonna die to toxic before he stalls all five of my pokemon especially because one of them has recovery yeah it's a lost cause for him at this point unless this clay doll can clutch something but yeah I mean, he can do this all he wants. He can be my guest. We're gonna, he's gonna die leagues before I do because the toxic damage is racking up faster for him because I poisoned him first. And that, the toxic damage is racking up. We're both on a timer. I'm just clicking. I don't care what I click here. I got the flinch. That's really unfortunate. And you can see the toxic damage. 43% from toxic. I spin here. Get the nice crit. Beautiful crit on the spin. Now he's taking 48. 49 actually. And right before it get into the 50 range, uh, he goes into Clay Doll. Like I said, I spun because I really didn't care. And now I can just go into Side Threat. This is probably the easiest U turn I'll ever have in my Pokemon career. And I use it to do 61 on Clay Doll. And yeah, Side Shock does 20. So 
yeah, he's leftovers. I feel like he's the offense that from the video I did, except he's uh, gonna be leftovers instead of Earthquake. And then Quagsire dies to Earthquake. No, Pukamuku dies to Earthquake. And that's going to be the game. Four guys worked on him early, and Scyther and Quagsire cleaned up house late. That's what I like to see. And on to the next one. Alright, game two of the video, which is actually game three of the tour, we have Breakfast Biscuit. It was actually a pretty well-known user in the room, I would say. And pretty great in tours from what I've seen. But I'm Mark of Five, the Ball Five. And this man's name always makes me hungry, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna go into this game thinking I had to eat. So here we go, I'm leading Amistar. By the way, the Flying Resist is Scyther. Oh, actually, never mind. He has a he has a Oracorio. I was gonna say the Flying Resist is Dugtrio, so Scyther goes in. But there's also an Oracorio, which is pretty good against Scyther. In that one team from the last video, I actually replaced my I replaced something with I replaced my Mesprit with Oracorio so I handle Scyther better because it still has the Fighting Resistance. So it's solid in that aspect. I go into Quagsire on Hitmonchan, but um, yeah, that didn't work. I knew that he'd go to Dugtrio to prevent me from Volt Switching because there was no way he was letting me just Volt around. So I'm going to do 51 off HP Grass if I was a Hidden Power Ground variant. That would have been crispy because then I could Volt Switch around at will. As well as having being locked into a Hidden Power that's super effective on Skun Tank if that was a play. So yeah, Gorgas is going to just take out Dugtrio here. I think he might have tried to sub based on the fact that he's toxic and tried to stay in. Um, Goes for the suit. I do switch because pursuit is the best move of the game, but there's nothing I could do. I'm not shadow sneak in his skun tank. He does defog, which is fine because his his uh what's what are the thing called? His spikes not there anymore. I don't have to remove that. He did it for me. I got my own spikes up though, and he just completely caught me off guard with the final gambit. But it's glad that I let. It's actually a good thing I let Armstar take it because it really wasn't doing too much against the other mons. He tries to roost. That's not happening. Nope. That's not it, Chief. Gorgeist. Cleaning shop here. I send out Scyther on the Rose. Dead. And Scyther just wins from here, because I knew Skuntank was low, which is why I didn't feel like saving off. Well, I didn't necessarily have to save Amistar. And Quagsire would win if Scyther doesn't, so... That's going to be game two, which is actually game three, but like I said, I didn't have the foresight at that time to download that replay. But on to the finals we go. And let me tell you, this finals game. Whew. And here we are, folks. The tournament finals. Mark a five of the ball five. We are here with this team. I'll be using all tourney. There is no rule against scouting. I just brought the same team because this team is fire. I mean, I've been winning with it. And I've actually had probably the my most consistent battles with this team for the most part. And we got I Love Gifts. And we were in call, I think, and some funny ass shit happened this battle. So we're actually going to start this game here. And I'm leading with Electro? No, I lied to you guys. I'm leading with Armistar, but she leads with Sand Slash. So I'm like, alright, this is the freest Scald of my career, but I actually got my rocks up because you always going to throw the bands up. Sand Slash poisons me as I Scald for respectable damage and burn him, so burn Sand Slash, poison Armistar. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? I have three Gen 1 Pokemon on this team, but that's cool. That's just a rule. I don't know why I felt the need to point that out, but it's just something that happens. So, Rock ended up being traded here. I stack a spike, not realizing that she can go into Hitmonchan if I do that. But I still did it. So, I mean, yeah, I could have went to my spin blocker by side. Instead of just blocking spin, you're taking chip. You can spin. Go ahead. But you're taking chip. But then I get crit by Drain Punch, so it's like it just, Hitmonchan just recovers all of it back. I do get... Pretty nice chip with Waterfall, but that crit on Drain Punch, I probably could have saved Quagsire for later. I don't know why I didn't, come to think of it. And this is just part of the sloppy start that ensues. I go for Seed Bomb, but I predicted the switch, but I just predicted the wrong switch. So I really wanted to Shadow Sleep there, so that's unfortunate. I go into Sand Slash, because the Sand Slash wall jump well. 10, 11, 12 times out of 10? Sleep Powder is imminent, but Sand Flash is living that shit. Or, Acrobat is only doing 24. 29, I lied, but that's still not enough for a threat. At least not to hit my chan, but I am going to get the max sleep turns. I think, I don't know if I've burned all of them yet, but for the time being. 
I think I've only been asleep two times though. So I go into Gore Guys because I don't have Quagsire anymore, and Rogs are up, so I can't go Scyther. Seed Bomb does not finish off Sand Slash, which is really unfortunate. I don't think Child Sneak would have. Child Sneak might, because I would have gone faster. So I'm going to my Sleeping Sand Slash, because Earthquake won't do much because I'm because it's burned, and I can just wake up and spin hopefully. But I think I, no, nah, yeah, I was asleep for three turns. I remember this now. And we get the rocks up out. I'm gonna keep spinning because I'm killing Sand Slash, and it's not killing me by not attacking. So that's what I'm gonna do for two turns. I'm gonna spin the third time I wanted. You don't know, understand how much I wanted to like attack here. I would have just off to this Hitmonchan, but I spun again. That's still chip. 8% chip is, is chip. So I'm gonna go back in the Gore Guys, but get predicted. I frisk the Dark Z. And this shit was funny because I was asking if it was Z, not realizing I was frisking it. I just frisked it because I played too fast. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, buddy. You had to go. It's Black Hole Eclipse, and the situation is not under control at the current time because I don't even know if the Persian is Z or not. We have to find out. Uh. If the person is actually Z, I think that's where the problem will ensue. Luckily, I don't get burned by this Scald here, so that's something to root for, I guess. He goes for Volt Switch. Sorry, she goes for Volt Switch, but I got the Sand Slash, so the Hazards are off the field. Hazards control the folks, so we might be coming back. I do get burned by this Scald, which is kind of unfortunate, but I do get a Poison off on the Swana. I was going to say I should have rocked, but my Rocker is Omstar, so no, I couldn't have. So, I go into Electro now. I can't Volt Switch because of Lantern, but I can start chipping away at Lantern. To make it easier for Scyther to click Aerial Ace if I can't bring it to a situation with Electro and Thunderbolt. And here I overpredict horribly, and it turns out to be a Scarf Swana, and I get bodied. So, yeah. At least at the very least. I think I go Gorgice here. And I think I seed bomb, despite there being a jump luff on the screen. But I seed bomb anyway. I didn't trust jump luff to Oko Scyther with acrobatics, so I'm going right into Scyther. And I get strength stabbed for that. Strength stab is a broken move, by the way. I'm going to U turn because once again, it can't Oko anything. And I am immune to sleep powder, so that's pretty nice. Uh, Hitmonchan comes out, and I kill it with Shadow Sneak. So this is looking like we're turning it around, actually. After having been a 2v5, even though the two Lantern and Hitmonchan were relatively low. So, Thunderbolt, great play. But I'm going to Gorgeist, and Dark Pulse, fantastic play. I guess that would have killed Scyther, so there's nothing wrong with it. Chip with Sneak puts Persian in Aerial Ace range, and now Scyther will come in and clutch the game. Aerial Ace once, that's gone. That does 65 minimum to Swana, and I am Scarf Scyther, so I am faster. So that will be the game. Great stuff by Scyther. Gorgeist, really, chipping everything with the Seed Bombs and the Shadow Sneak. And Scyther just came through. I didn't have to use... I don't think I really took advantage of hazards in any game, because they all got cleared. Or, the one time I did, they got cleared. Or, they all got cleared. I did it multiple times, I think, but all my hazards got cleared. Either way, great finish. And shout out to every user I played in this tournament. And thank you guys for watching.